Hi, it's Recovery Mom, and I'm going to talk about something today. This article, let me see if I can get out of the way. Should patients be allowed to die from anorexia? Uh, showed up in the New York Times magazine, and I just wanted to read one of the comments, the responses that were underneath this article. It's written by Dr. Shan Geisinger, and it touches on so so many important aspects of eating disorder recovery that a lot of people don't take into account when they're dealing with, working with, living with anorexia, okay? So I'm just going to read it. I'm just going to read it for you. Really try to listen to each sentence. Each part of this touches on almost every aspect of recovery, and it's just so important. And here's the comment by Dr. Geisinger. Engelhardt's excellent piece was marred by experts' outdated understanding of anorexia. Before we suggest palliative care, we should tell these hopeless people that weight loss, not psychopathology, causes the disorder. The current definition, okay, the current definition dates to 1980 and has not changed, although research shows that anorexia is a genetic neurobiological disorder initiated by starvation. In 2003, I showed that the symptoms could have been selected during prehistoric famines when migration was the best solution to local famine. Rats, mice, and pigs also made their living as omnivorous, opportunistic, wandering foragers and will develop anorexia and hyperactivity when starved. In a lab cage, they will die. We should tell sufferers and their families that the reason for the skewed sex ratio is that ovarian hormones turn on any genetic ability to develop anorexia in response to starvation. This genome hormone starvation interaction can only mean that teenage girls were selected to travel during a famine. We could tell sufferers that their feelings are so strong because the stakes were once life and death. People with anorexia are likely the descendants of heroes who found better lands for their bands. The disorder changes as weight is regained. We must prepare them for when ravenous hunger takes over, when they are close to their healthy weight. The same adaptation that thwarts dieters. Sexism, economic incentives, and resistance to paradigm change have prevented the development of effective treatments. I'm not going to say anything more about that. I'm just going to leave it with what Dr. Geisinger had to say and what her thoughts were. Um, and I look forward to reading your comments and your thoughts down below.